bless the Lord, bless the Lord, amen. amen. It amen. is that time, time for our Wednesday night interactive Bible study. First three rows, thank you, Jesus. All in obedience in the house of the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Let us stand to our feet as we get ready to go to the throne of God in this place on today. Pray that you all have had a wonderful day so far, amen. Uh, I was just thinking about the temperatures outside today. I said, this is different for June. It's just cold. Every day it changes, but it's a little chilly today. But to God be the glory. I mean, chilly for June. Come on now, y'all know it's June. Okay? I'm talking about for June. Anyway, let us go to the throne. Dear Father, we come before you tonight, Lord God, as humbly as we know how, Lord God. First of all, just to give you the honor and the praise, Lord God. Father, we love you so much, and we just want you to know that on tonight, not just tonight, but each and every day. Father, we are so thankful to be a part of your family, and I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you would just allow everyone in the room to just be in tune to what we're going to talk about, shake off the tiredness, Lord God, that they may be feeling, Lord God, open up their ears and their hearts to be able to receive what it is that you desire to speak to us, your people, on today. Father, I just thank you for those that have pressed their way out. I thank you for those that are tuning in via live stream. Be with anybody that may be uh, uh, traveling on their way here, allowing them to get here safe and sound. Father, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You all may be seated. Hallelujah. While you're taking your seat, you can turn your Bibles to Psalm 118. Psalm 118. I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation. This wasn't actually part of my teaching, but it was just something that actually stood out to me, and it ties in uh, to what it is that we will be talking about on today. And so we are starting a new teaching on tonight. Uh, and the title is, Do You Have a War Room? That is the title of this Bible study series that we are on. Do you have a war room? And so I want you to turn to Psalm 118. Uh, and when you get there, looking at the New Living Translation, say, I got the word. i give you a moment. New Living Translation is what I want to read right now. Yes, the New Living Translation. I'm starting at verse 1 in the New Living Translation. And the word of God, oh, amen, take your time, but don't take too long. <laughs> Psalm 118. Psalm 118. It just, uh, it just stood out in my spirit. And so Psalm 118, the New Living Translation, and again, as I said, today's uh, series is Do You Have a War Room? And so verse 1, it says, Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let all Israel repeat, his faithful love endures forever. Let Aaron's descendants, the priests, repeat, his faithful love endures forever. Let all who fear the Lord repeat, his faithful love endures forever. In my distress, I did what? Pray. It says, in my distress, I prayed to the Lord. And what did the Lord do? The word of God says, and the Lord answered me and set me free. Hallelujah. I love that. Again, we're talking about do you have a war room? And if you know anything about a war room, you know what goes on in the war room. But it says, in my distress, I had a little talk with the Lord. I had a little talk with Jesus. I prayed to the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is so, the Lord is for me. It's a good thing to know that the Lord is on your side. It's a good thing to know that the Lord is for you, because how many of y'all know everybody ain't for you? But the word says the Lord is for me. So I will have no fear. When you know that the Lord got your back, there's no need to have any type of fear. It says, what can men people do to me? Yes, the Lord is for me. He will do what? Help me. I will look in triumph at those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in 
in the Lord than to trust in people. Because the Lord is consistent. The Lord is faithful. You can depend on him. But when it comes down to us as human beings, you can't always trust in us. But you can trust in the Lord. And so it says, the Lord is for me, so I will have no fear. What can many people do to me? Yes, the Lord is for me. He will help me. I will look and triumph at those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in people. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in to trust in princesses. Though hostile nations surround me. What is your hostile nation? Though hostile nations surround me, I destroy them all. With what? With the authority of the Lord. As people of God, we need to learn how to tap into the authority of the Lord that we have been given. And so it says, no hostile nations surrounded me. I destroyed them all with the authority of the Lord. Oh, yes, they surrounded me like bees. They blazed against me like a crackling fire. But I destroyed them with the authority of the Lord. People of God, we need to tap in to what we have been given. And so, when you think about it, a while ago, a couple of years ago, there was a movie that came out, The War Room, right? How many of y'all remember that movie? How many of y'all actually saw the movie? Amen. And so, you never saw it? Whew, you need to see it. Everybody else saw it. That's a movie you definitely need to see. It's very, very good. Uh, but it was a movie called The War Room that was released about two years ago. It was very, very, very powerful. And I remember being in the movie because we went as a field trip, right? Right. We went as a field trip as the church. And I remember that it was very, very, didn't we? No. We, we didn't? No. Oh, okay. Okay. That wasn't. We went to go see. <laughs> we went to see another one besides that. But okay. I know we went to see the, the one about the last days, too. Uh, I can't even think of it right now. But anyway. Left behind. Left behind together. Okay. So it wasn't a field trip. I just wanted a couple people. But anyway. There was a scene in that movie that had me amped up. I was in that theater, and I was trying to do everything to keep myself calm because I was feeling what was taking place, amen? And that is when the wife in that movie began to walk in authority. How many of y'all remember that scene? When she began to walk in authority, I kept trying to keep my mouth closed, but it got to one point I just couldn't keep it closed in the movie theater anymore. And so she walked in authority, and this is what she said, in case you don't remember. And then keep in mind when we just talk about when hostile nations surround you, how you have to walk in the authority of the Lord. Amen? And so this is what she said. She said, I don't know where you are, devil, but I know you can hear me. You have played with my mind and had your way long enough. No more. You are done. Jesus is Lord of this house. And that means there's no place for you here anymore. So take your lies, your schemes, and your accusations and get out in Jesus' name. You can't have my marriage. You can't my children, and you sure can't have my man. This house is under new management, and that means you are out. And another thing, I am so sick of you stealing my joy. But that's changing too. My joy doesn't come from my friends. It doesn't come from my job. It doesn't even come from my husband. My joy is found in Jesus. And just in case you forgot, he has already defeated you. So go back to hell where you belong and leave my family alone. Man, oh man, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. Woo, that scene right there, I was like, yes. Because as children of God, we need to get to a point where we realize and understand what we really have. 
There's some things that come our way and we have a tendency to want to buckle under pressure. We have a tendency to want to lose our mind and act like we don't know what to do. Tap in to the authority that you have. It's Bible study. <laughs> so I'm not preaching. So I'm going to calm my little self down, but it, it just got me a little excited. And so, but guess what? Remember, people of God, before she actually got to this level of authority, she was going through. And so she had to get some things in order in her life and in her heart and in her home. And she had to understand for real what it was that she was really dealing with. And so she created a place in a closet to do her fighting based on information and wisdom that she received from Miss Clara. Y'all remember Miss Clara? Yeah. See, because she wasn't the one that started the closet situation. She didn't know what to do when she was going through. But how many of y'all know that older lady had that wisdom? And come on, baby, let me talk to you. You know, she thought it was all about a house that was being sold, but the Lord had something else in store. And so she began to listen to the information that Miss Clara gave to her, and so I want to just share that little clip with you, amen, on tonight, and then we're going to move forward. Now this is where I do my fight. A closet. I call it my war room. prayers for each area of your life. A prayer strategy? Yes. Now, I used to do what you and your husband are doing, but it got me nowhere. And then I really started studying what the scriptures say. And God showed me that it wasn't my job to do the heavy lifting. No. That was something that only he could do. It was my job to seek him, to trust him, and to stand on his word. Miss Claire, I've never seen anything like this. And I admire it. I really do. I just, I don't have time to pray that much every day. But you apparently have time to fight losing battles with your husband. Elizabeth, if you will give me one hour a week, I can teach you how to fight the right way with the right That's the most that I wanted to highlight from that particular scene. But when you think about it, Miss Clara had to give her some understanding. And the amazing part is, a lot of us think like that lady. I don't have time to be praying like that. Because that lady was intense with her prayer. She was serious about her prayer. We got to ask ourselves, are we really serious about ours? Or are we individuals that feel like I really don't have time like that? Because, let me turn this down. Turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. You need to learn how to seek God and trust him. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 5. And y'all know in the body of Christ, let's be for real. We make excuses for why we don't do the things that we know we should do. We justify, we have all type of reasons, but it's really for your own good. How many of y'all know that? It's really for your own good. Even when you understand it, you saw the movie and the power of the world, it's for your own good. Because sometimes when you're going through different things, you need to know how to handle it. Come on, pass the microphone. I'm going to try to keep it short, but you know I'm going to talk too much anyway. All right, um, but then, then talk. Take your time. All right. <laughs> Share what's on your heart, sir. All right, so at work, um, sometimes I'm just the gospel music. 
So one of my coworkers came out and said, oh, you religious? I said, um, what do you mean religious? Mm-hmm. And I was trying to explain him. He said, okay, yeah. He's like, um, he's from Georgia, and, um, no God too. I said, all right. So I came back to work this Monday, and he came up and said, um, how was your weekend? I said, it was good, so I came back in here. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just joking, right? <laughs> Flat around. He, he said, um, well, let me show you how my weekend was. So my wife had a miscarriage last night. And like I'm, um, I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. I was, I was just joking, not, I didn't really mean it. He said, yeah. So then Tuesday came to me. He said, guess what? I said, what? He said, my mother had a heart attack last night. And I'm like, like wow, no, he's really going through. He said, how can a God do that? How can a God take away a child like that? And I was trying to tell him, but well, sometimes um, God has a plan, and, and um, he maybe he's trying to build you up and you struggle for something else. I don't know. Uh, but he was like really angry. He's like, no, how can God do that? And I didn't know what to say to him. I like, I told him, I understand how you feel, but you know, <laughs> I was just speechless. No. Right. Yeah. And a lot of times people are in situations like that. A lot of times people do get angry with God when certain things happen. How can God let this happen to my baby? How can God let this happen to my uh, 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 children, my husband, wh- whatever the case may be? And the reality of it is there are things that are going to take place on this earth that we will never have an answer to as to why. But getting angry and mad at God isn't the solution. What you need to do is draw even closer to him. Talk to him even the more because in the midst of it, he's the only one that can really comfort a person when they're going through hostile situations. I don't care what it is. When they're going through hard times, we have to have a one-on-one relationship with God to be able to commune with him. And so it's one of those things you can't really give him an answer as to why that happened to his baby. Things happen. We never always have the answer. I wanted to tell him to pray, but he was angry at the moment. He wasn't going to do no praying, so I prayed for him. But I wanted to give him a chance to calm down because, I mean, that's that's a lot. You know, I I really felt it when he said it. Right, right. And, And you did the right thing. Because I was going to, when you said that you was going to tell him to pray, I'm like, at that moment, he ain't trying to. That's when sometimes we got to tap in. Mm-hmm. That's when sometimes you got to go in your war room on behalf of somebody else. Right. Because at that moment, they're already going through a lot. But I don't know about you, but I believe in the power of prayer. Does anybody else in here really believe in the power of prayer? Amen. And let me tell you something. We have to get to a point where we only, where we stop just praying when we're going through See, as children of God, we need to have constant communion with the Lord. And so, again, this woman, she created a place in a closet to do her fighting based on the information and wisdom she received from Miss Clara, the older lady. Matthew chapter 5, I mean Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. Are you there? All right, the word of God says, and when you do what? When you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray, standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret those things that you pray about and commune with him about your father who sees in secret will reward you openly and when you pray do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do for they think that they will be heard for their many words. As you all know, I have been mandated to pray for 60 days in this place where I stand. That mandate went out. The Lord spoke to the woman of God. She declared it in the atmosphere. For those of you all that are tuning in on Facebook Live or uh, or Facebook Live, oftentimes I've had individuals to inbox me and say, I'm just curious, what is this pound 44? It's pound 43 of 60. What is that about? 
you know, and I had to tell them at that particular time, when you see that, that's when I have stepped into the church and I have begun to pray as instructed by the Holy Ghost, by the woman of God on that day when she was here. And so when you think about it, 60 days, no matter what's going on in my life, to physically come to the church house and pray. And so I'm going to share with you the decree that went out again, just as a reminder. Because even when I read Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 through 7, it was in line with what she spoke. And so on April 24, Bishop Coletta Vaughn spoke to me and she said, Apostle Mitchell, where do you pray? Where do you pray in this place? She said, the next 60 days, I want you to lay prostrate behind the podium. Legs that way. And God says, everything you say, you whisper to me. In this spot, you are going to see sudden manifestation. So be careful what you ask me for. Be careful what you say. Don't waste words. Don't pray for folk. Tell me what you want. That was the decree that was spoken on that night. And it was major. And I took it very serious. And again, I don't care how busy I had been in the course of a day. If I had to come in at 9 o'clock at night after handling all other affairs, I would make my way here out of obedience. And can I tell you that I have seen sudden manifestation about the things that I have communed with God with in this place. And so no matter who you are, you need a private place to commune with God on a regular basis. You need that secret place. Again, I ask you, do you have a war room? See, this isn't my war room. This has become a war room to a degree in the sanctuary, and I'm explaining that, but I already have a war room. And so, when you think about it, that scripture, it talks about going to your secret place, amen, that we just looked at in Matthew chapter 6. So guess what? We need to really ask ourselves, where is your secret place? Where is your secret place where you really have a moment where you can go in and shut the door, man, having total privacy with no distractions? Then the word spoken was that there will be sudden manifestations. In the scripture, it says that God will reward you openly. That's the sudden manifestation. It's answered prayers. And then the spirit of the Lord spoke to her and said, don't waste words. In this scripture we see here, it says, do not use vain repetition. And so, this time of prayer has been quite revealing to me. It's been necessary and it's been life changing. Amen. And so God has shown me why I needed to physically come to the church. There are things that are in order on another level now. But he showed me why I needed to physically come to the church. Because when she originally asked me, Apostle Mitchell, where do you pray? My mind immediately went to my home, into my war room. That's where my mind went. Then she followed up with the next question, because the Lord must have heard my mind. Then she said, where do you pray in this place? And you heard me say to her, well, you know, basically in the office, you know, there are times I'll come here and pray and things of that nature. But the reality of it is most of my prayers took place in my home. Most of my prayers took place in my home, in my war room, when I'm praying and interceding on behalf of other people. But that word was clear for me to come here and ask him what I want. Do y'all know that was the hardest thing for me to do? Because half the time I don't pray for myself. Half the time I'm always interceding. And when I get to this place and any of you all come to my mind, I shut it down. Because I'm not in this place to pray for you all. He's given me some specific instructions here. And, 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 and I'm telling you, it was a struggle. Especially when you find yourself always praying for others. I'm not a person that asked for a lot. So it was hard, God. And, and it was just hard. But then, come on, give it a mic.
in reference to you not praying for yourself, do you feel like you were being selfish if you prayed for yourself? You know, I don't want to say selfish. I don't want to feel like say that I felt like I would be selfish praying for myself. It's just something that I just didn't really do. It just came, it comes natural to me to pray for other people. It comes natural, much easier. And so even when you think about it, see, sometimes when you think about ask me what you want, sometimes your mind think about stuff. Because a lot of times people go to God on stuff. Y'all know I'm not a stuff kind of person. So that's, I mean, you know, I ain't got no, I ain't got no stuff I want to ask for. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, come on. And that's a pretty interesting observation because, you know, I, I do the same thing. I, I pray for other people. Um, I think a lot of people call it intercession, intercession, inter inter intercessory prayer. prayer. But it's not, I, you know, I never saw myself as an intercessor. Mm -hmm. But I know that I can, when I pray, it's, it's like I start praying for people that come into my mind. And then when I hear people saying sometimes, uh, you know, mostly the preachers or the person that's in the pulpit, they'll say, yeah, you always up in God's face asking him for stuff and doing this and doing that. And you just, you know, you ask him for stuff. And then when he give it to you, then you stop praying. But it's almost like, I'm, you know, I don't be asking for stuff. I, 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 I don't know why. <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. I don't know why I don't be asking for some stuff. Because it be some stuff I may, be, I may want. But it's just like I can start praying and all of a sudden just people. Let me tell I mean, you. I mean, you know, it's just like people just come to my mind and I start praying for them. When I think about stuff, because we think about stuff, material stuff, to a degree, I, I'm thinking that's what, well, I know that's what my mind is. Right. And, my, and in my mind, God is bigger than just acting about stuff. When I go to him, I want to talk about something else besides stuff. A better house, bigger car, money, you know, all that stuff. I don't want to talk to him about them things. And, you know, and so it's like, you know, if I talk to him about things, I want to talk to him, to me, about something, you know, that just ain't stuff that to me that I think is a little more important. But one of the things that even stood out even in this time is he said, you have not because you ask not. Sometimes you may have a desire for things, but you don't have it. You have not because you ask not. And so, you know, it's been a lot that's been actually been revealed, and it's been a good thing. And so I know why I needed to come to the church. So that has been covered, and I'm happy about that. Amen? And like I said, it shifted some other things in my life. And so, again, originally when she asked me, where do I pray, immediately I wanted to say at home because I had what I consider to be a war room. I don't write on my walls, but you know how the children have science fair projects, and that's what I have, the big poster board, a science fair project. So it's like I got the war room at the top. I have different scriptures that's on there, all type of posties on there with individuals' names, situations, different things of that nature. Then when certain things come to pass, I check it off that it come to pass. Come on. I'm your child, huh? What you laugh? <laughs> okay, so that is really funny. Because that's what my war room looked like. <laughs> and the funniest thing about it is, I haven't seen yours in your house. Yeah, you. I, I folded up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, okay. So you folded mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you don't know where mine is either, do you? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so the bottom line, again, I have a war room. I don't write on my walls, but I have a science fair project that is my wall. Amen. And so basically now I had two different places where I actually prayed for two different things for two different reasons. And so, people of God, where is your war room? Everybody needs one. And yes, come on. What's your scripture? One of, one of them, of course, is Ephesians chapter 6. We wrote verse. Out against blood. That's, my <laughs> That's one of the ones on my headline. Amen. Definitely. And so, Yes, you can 
pray anywhere. You can pray in the shower. You can pray while driving in the car. But let me tell you, it's not a war room. Your shower is not a war room. Why would I say your shower is not a war room? And why would I say your car is not a war room? When you think about a war room. Come on, somebody tell me something. Give it back there to Rob. First of all, you're not in there long enough. Especially in the shower. Amen. Okay, okay. Amen. Come on. And you're focusing on other things. You're focusing on driving. You're focusing on cleaning yourself. So you're, you're I don't want to say you're distracted, but your focus is not where it should be. Uh-huh. Come on, give it to Brother Vernon. You have a tendency of rushing your prayer mm -hmm. rather than taking the time and speaking your mind clearly and fluently and just go with the flow. When you're in your car, you're driving, like you said, you, you're paying attention to getting to work your destination. You're in the shower, you uh, want get, to get out the shower, watch TV or whatever, but when you have that war room, you can sit down and just let it all go. When you have that designated place. Yes, ma'am. A designated place. And I'm going to tell you why. Because there's a lot of things that can go on in that designated place. Because half the time, if you really are interceding and praying for certain things, you can't remember everything you need to pray for. Mm -hmm. So I promise you, while you're driving, while you're walking on the bridge, while you're in the shower, a lot of the things that you really need to tap into, you don't have them before you to really keep them on the forefront of your mind and to call it out. When you think about your war room, you need to have your word with you in your war room. Your Bible. When you're in your war room, you need to have a journal and a pen. Because in the midst of you being in your war room and your time, private time with God, he will begin to download speak stuff. And how many of y'all have said before, okay, I'm going to write it down as soon as I get to some paper, and you can't remember it. When God is trying to download stuff in your spirit, you need to be in a position where you're still to be able to write whatever it is that he's speaking to you. You need to be able to go through whatever scripture. Because in your war room, he will give you scriptures. All of a sudden, things will come into your mind that you didn't really know. Or why is he taking me there? He's taking you there for a reason. But if you in your shower, that scripture hits you. And he really tries to be, you, you ain't got your word with you. You don't have your pen with you. You don't have a lot of things with you. You don't have your on the rush mode. And for real, most of us will really realize that we don't really spend a lot of time in a war room. Some of us can really say, I don't even have one. I have never even considered and thought of a place where I really shut in with God. So we have somebody with a doubt in mind. Pass the phone to Mike Mary. You got to come on, because you know you're the advocate. Come on. <laughs> I feel better in the shower. I feel better in the time. Um, I spend time in the shower. I don't know how long most people's showers are, but, you know, if I feel like praying and that's where I want to pray at, that's where I pray. But in my car alone, in the garage, oh, I'm perfect there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even if I'm driving and I pull over, I'm, that's, nobody else is around me. It's just me. In my car, my Bible's always with me. And, you know, I mean... Okay, stop right there. So, in your war room, everything that you tap, everything in your war room, is it in your car with you when you go? Is it in the shower with you when you go? Is it really there? Because guess what? I love the shower. People don't realize, guess what? I had a moment the other day where some things hit my spirit in the shower, and I got all out the shower, got dressed, and did my Facebook Live. They got thousands of views already right now. But guess what? Yeah, he can speak to you in the place. And I pray in those places. The word of God says pray without ceasing. But I'm, I'm tapping into the word. Matthew chapter 6, when it tells you to get to that place. Shut the door. That private place. That secret place with God. Where you shut down. Where you can't be distracted if you're driving in your car and somebody jump in front of you. And so I'm not saying you can't pray in the, pray in the places. But what you have in your war room, for real, if that you have set up, it ain't in all them places. I must don't have a lot. Well, 
Hey, man, who else? Somebody else had something? Come on, Vernon. I go on prayer walks. Mm-hmm. Like when I leave church and I'll I'll walk for like maybe two or three hours. Mm-hmm. And during that time, I pray for not only the church, but you know. But when I get back to my place, it's like I leave everything outside and I can function better. And my whole apartment is a war room to me because I live by myself. And I don't have all those things set up. So would that be a big, I'm not going to say issue, but would that be okay? Or would I actually need a war room? Well, what I want us to, I'm trying to shift us to another place. Because a lot of times we don't really commune with God like we should. We can hit him on the high and by. We may not even talk to him every day. Do you take a walk every day? No, but every morning at 5 a.m. I'm up praying. Okay, okay, so you, you commune with them every day at 5 a.m. In your household, on the... In my apartment, then I also pray again at uh, 8.30. Okay, okay. And so the bottom line is, it's like trying to get us to a place where we tap into praying with God more consistently and even having some form of direction when we're in prayer. Let me tell you one thing. People ask you to pray for me, and you know what people say? I pray for you. Do you really know? Do you really? I mean, because sometimes you can have so many people coming to you for prayer that you really need to write it down. And sometimes you need to write down what it is that you're praying for. And if you're interceding for a whole bunch of people, you can't always remember everything just off the top of your head. So sometimes you can have certain things to actually guide you in the midst of you praying as you calling out names, as you talking to the Lord on behalf of some things. When you think about it, you know, when you're walking, you know, at that particular time, let's just say he dropped a scripture in your spirit and he wants you to study that scripture at that moment. Can you really do that while walking? Because but do you have a pad and a pen? What I'm, what I'm trying to tell y'all, do y'all understand? God, can, God will give you revelation. Yes, ma'am. But guess what? A lot of times we don't sit still long enough to hear from him. Sometimes we say what we got to say and we roll. Sometimes you don't have to say that. Sometimes you just need to sit still. Come on, who's saying what? Folks and then Angelita. You know, and um, talking about the war room, because I just visualize. In mine, it's like people, I have people's names there. And then under their names, I have what I'm praying for. Mm -hmm. And they don't even know I'm praying. They don't even know their name. They don't know they're in the room. But it's like I could be praying, and then God would just tell me something or show me something, and then I would put it on and, mm-hmm. and or add somebody's name. I mean, believe it or not, I found it added me. I got me a, my little space because <laughs> I had everybody else on there and that added me. But it's like um it's like you be praying and then it's just people come to you, come to my mind and I I pray I put them on the wall and I write something down. But you know what's the interesting thing? Some people on my wall and God has showed me things about them, and it's on there. They don't even know it. And it's the most exciting part about it is when it comes to pass, yes. and you write, you erase it all. Now, yes. A whole bunch of them still up on there. How long? When did that movie come out? About three years? Two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. So some of those prayers have not manifested yet, but I'm not going to take them down. I'm going to continue to pray. But it's really nice when, or you can really see how God is moving when you can write something off. Not too many have been written off, mm-hmm. but it's really a really good feeling when you know God has given you something and you write it down and you continue to pray for that person and then you see, you know, that it comes to pass. Because God literally told me about this young lady that's going to have a baby. Mm-hmm. But I can't tell her that because she probably think I, you know, I lost my mind. Like, oh, really? Mm-hmm. And she doesn't have any children. Um, she lost a child years ago. But it's just like I just believe that God is going to allow her to have this child. And 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 uh, I've thought about one of the other scriptures that I have on mind, and it's talked about the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. 
the reality of it is, you know, and, and think about how he hears the prayers of the righteous. It's like, when I'm praying, I'm praying and I'm believing that I am the righteous of God. Just like Elijah spoke to the elements and the elements stayed back. And then when he released the rain, the rain came forward. I pray and I believe things will manifest and I see things manifest. I have different individuals to inbox. One young lady, just when I tell you sudden manifestation, people don't even know. After I did that Facebook Live yesterday, there was something that I prayed for, not a particular person. Hear me on this. I didn't pray for a particular person, but I, I told God what I wanted. After that, the very next day, that evening, I got an inbox from a woman, not even in this area. She's in the UK, and we've been communicating. And she began to ask me questions about deliverance and how did you get deliverance. So we going back and forth, and I'm ministering to her. And, and she reached out to me this morning excited and on fire for God because she said, I feel a load lifted off of me. I am free. And you just don't know. All I heard was sudden manifestation, sudden manifestation. And so the bottom line is, you know, we have to really believe that we have that kind of authority. Whether we're praying for somebody else, whether we're praying for ourselves, whether we're praying for a situation. The bottom line is the War Room movie came out two years ago. But guess what? This ain't new. It just got a cute little name now, the War Room, but it ain't new. And so even when you think about it, most people don't lay in the presence of God. See, you, when you look at individuals in the, in the Bible and they would be on the threshing floor and things of that nature, crying, they would be laid out in the presence of God. Can anybody remember the last time they laid? Well, no, nah, y'all can remember because I had the whole church to lay out. So everybody had to go up. But prior to that, y'all probably be like, hmm, let me see. It may feel strange to you. Can God talk to you sitting up? Yes, he can, Mary. He can talk to you when you're doing flips, cartwheels. But sometimes it's good to lay prostrate before the Lord. Uh-huh. Why? 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 You want me to tell you why? No, no. Why is that something that Why do you have to lay down before the Lord? Why can't you just, I mean, what's the difference? I guess the word, why is that so significant that you have to lay down? I mean, I know that's what they used to do in the, back in the day, and it, it's been, it was inherited as a tradition of whatever, or whatever you want to say, but why? Is that, is, would you be heard, would you be heard differently, why? <laughs> You got somebody behind you on fire to answer that. Pass it back. Um, I find it that you are in submission. You're humbling yourself before the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he can really, you, you can hear. Yes, Lord. There's nothing there but you and him. You lay there long enough, he's going to speak. It's just, a, it's just being submissive. It's like not yourself. having any control either. Right. Because I'm going to tell you, a lot of times we like to be in control of stuff, situations. But when you lay before the Lord, you really feel like you really have no control at that moment. It's a very humbling position to be in. And so it's one of those things where... Do we always have to have a total, total written out reason why? One thing about it, I, years ago when I first got saved, this was the first time I believe I ever laid in the presence of the Lord. If I did not lay before him when he told me to, I would have missed what he was trying to speak to me. I really believe so. But I was battling with God because I'm under the dryer. And y'all heard I'm under the dry, dry my hair. And the spirit of the Lord told me to get up and go and lay in my presence. 
I'm drying my hair right now. You can talk to me right here. That was me. See, I was married. You can talk to me right here, God. I, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to, why do I, why do I have to go lay in your presence? You can talk to me any way I am. Go lay in my presence. Just out of simple submission, after fighting, I went and laid in his presence. And my, oh my, the way he began to speak to me about my call and assignment in the kingdom of God was unreal. And so, it's one of those things, people of God. With God, you can lay. And he may speak. He may not speak. But sometimes just put yourself in a position to be in his presence on another level. Of course, he's present everywhere. But we want to sometimes put ourselves in a position to be in his presence on another level. Come on. Okay, because, I mean, I've always had questions about this because I'm not one to follow what people would do traditionally. Most rebellious people don't, but go ahead. Or to follow what you <laughs> I mean, I'm just being straight I'm up. Saying, I'm just like the guy who said, well, just because they say lift your hands and praise the Lord, why do we got to praise the Lord like that? I mean, in the Bible, people praise the Lord in different ways. Some people no, walk, some I, people clap, some people like, just because somebody tell me to do that, just because they tell me, I'm not going to do no, it. I don't, I am saying that no one's really, you now. when you said lay on the floor, and you know, I did that. I'm just saying, I never found that, you know, when people, I just found that, I just wanted to know why is that so significant when you can be in a submission, submission to the Lord without laying on the ground. You can be, you can be sitting still. I mean, some people lay on the ground, they instantly fall asleep. I mean, you know, I, I'm just, I was just wondering why is that so significant? It, it, all my life was I doing something wrong when I'm praying to the Lord. I mean, you know, you because you don't. You think every somebody. time you pray, you don't lay out before God. No, but I'm just saying, when you hear this in church without any um, meaning behind it, you just say you just lay on the floor and talk to the Lord. And, I'm, and you know, you you growing up, you're like, why, why, why can't they talk to the Lord? If the Lord, if you're just talking to the Lord, why can't you have a cup of tea and talk to the Lord? Why can't you just be in the bathroom and talk to the Lord? Why? What's the difference in laying on the floor and talking to the Lord than sitting up? Now, you said total submission. Okay, total submission to the Lord. Okay, I understand you, 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 you're not doing anything else. Well, you know what? You can be laying on the floor tapping your fingers. And I just never found, I just, I, I always had a question about it. It wasn't, it's not being rebellious. It's like, to me, it's just like, it's just a tradition that men do. That's just me. Well, the, the reality, you pass it to minister folks, is something that people do. Some people may say, well, why do I have to kneel and pray? The Bible tells you to kneel down and pray. So if the Bible tell you, it didn't tell you why, it just said, kneel. And sometimes we want to know too much instead of just doing. What I've been saying to you since you walked up in church. <laughs> well, but guess what? There's some things you ain't going to get an answer to. You'll never know why the first person that gave a tithe before tithe was a commandment. You'll never know why they gave it. But guess what? We've been doing it ever since. Come on. And then they, I think Mary. Is that something that you dealt with in your old church growing up where people lay prostrate before the Lord? No. So where did you see it? I, when I visit churches, when they say it, when just people say it, I, I hear people say it, but I, you know, first I had to look up the word prostrate because I'm like, you know, you're talking to somebody growing up, you're talking about they Give it a mic. Wait a minute, you, okay. just said, you just said something. You said growing up. You heard it. So you heard it. But never seen it done. Okay, she only heard it, but never so seen you it heard done. It, but you heard it, but you, you've never seen it done. But then you say you went to other churches and you saw it, it actually taking place. Maybe one person laying on the floor. Maybe. Okay. So, and you didn't understand it, why they did it, and you were just questioning why. So I don't know why I'm sitting here thinking, so, you know, I'm... I'm being married, I'm so I'm trying to figure out why you go and bring twelve people to church because I sure wouldn't have done it. 
for real. Why'd you do that? Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, I, that's a question to me. Why, why'd you do that? Just like you said, why people lay prostrate before the Lord? Why'd you go and get 12 people bring them to church? Because I sure would not have done it, okay? Well, that's a different scenario. But, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that's a different Well, yes, it's, it's still a why. why. Sometimes you're not going to. It's a why. It's, it's some, some, stuff, some stuff we put too much thinking into instead of just, yeah, you, you just think too much. <laughs> I told you that since you first started coming to this church, you think too much, <laughs> you know? And so sometimes, you know, I know it's hard to trust, but if ain't nobody asking you to do something is sin, what's the problem? If, 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 if you know, Lord knows, I mean, you, I finally submitted to lay that you probably fight forever against them. Come on. Come on. Um, I, I think it's, it's just a level, it's levels to intimacy mm -hmm. or communion with God. And I think it's symbolic of, you know, just getting to the lowest place to where, like you said, you have no control to the point where it's like saying, I'm yours. Yes. Yes. Have your way to a whole nother level. It's like putting yourself on an altar almost. Yes. And say, I have no authority. No, I'm yielding I'm, to I'm, the I'm, most. I'm, 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 I'm. I'm surrendered to your will at this moment. Lord, speak to me. Because it's, ain't, ain't, it's not just about you talking to him. Like you said, you, you know, you don't have to say a word sometimes. You know, it's just saying, have your way, Lord, with me. I need you on a whole other level. Mm -hmm. You know, like I'm, I'm just totally yours right now. And, you know, it can be, a, it can be just you laying there with some worship music playing softly in the background and you're just not saying a word and God will, he will meet you. He will, you will have an experience because that, I mean, I haven't done it a lot, but when I did it, I didn't say a word. I felt like I couldn't even say anything. You know, I felt like my mouth was shut. I know that, that don't sound godly, but but it was like I was just so yielded that he just, I felt his presence. That's the only thing I can say. I just felt his presence on a whole nother level. And all I could do was just lay there and weep. And that's all I can say about it. But, you know, the same thing with the whole war room thing. It's just a, it's just a level of intimacy to where it's you and him. And you, you, you prepared your own sanctuary or place where it's just you and him. When I think about a relationship, it's almost like, you know, when you find that place with your, your wife or your husband or something like that, and it's just y'all go away to y'all spot. Your secret place. Your secret place. Mm -hmm. To be intimate with each other. Mm -hmm. To a whole other level that, you know, that's how I look at it. Yeah. And, and, and when you think about prayer, oftentimes people come to the altar to pray. When people would go through different things in the Bible, they would do what? Go to the altar. They would make an altar before the Lord for a moment of communing with God. When it comes down to the altar, even if they was dealing with some sins in their life, what did they take to the altar? What did they take to the altar? Somebody tell me. They took an animal. And what did they do with that animal? Before they, they, they slaughtered it, but they, they had to do something with it first. And they, they presented it, and they did what with it? They laid it on the altar, and they killed it and left it at the altar. And so sometimes when you come in to the altar to commune with God in your personal sanctuary, you're coming, and you're laying things, you're laying yourself. At that moment, you are presenting yourself as a living sacrifice. Laying yourself out before the Lord and killing those things that don't glorify him. Communing with him with the areas that are troubling you. You're laying it at the altar to leave it at an intimate place. Okay. I tried a couple of times. I laid on the floor and started cleaning. 
I swear, I lost, I lost. I laid on the floor and I was like, that's hair. And I got up and I started, I couldn't do it. I, but my thing is my easy chair in my room or in my, but I, I tried it. Well, maybe if you vacuum your floor first I, before you lay, then you won't be distracted with your OCD. Oh. Okay? <laughs> Wait a minute, Deacon James had his hand up. Oh, go ahead. Okay. I ain't getting nowhere on tonight's lesson. <laughs> go ahead. So prior to the movie coming out, I'm going to read that in a minute, Lady E. Come on. I know that you prayed for people. So when when so after the movie, that's when you created your war room. And when you first created it, who was on? I mean, I don't want you to give me no names or anything, but how did you come about who to put? Was it somebody that you already knew? Did you lay before the Lord and he told you to put that person on your prayer wall? How did you, I mean, how did you come about with these people and did you have a prayer room prior to the movie? Prior to that, I had a journal. Okay. That's what I had. Okay. And so I will write in my journal, write certain things in my journal. Okay. Now it's just easier, but I also still have a journal to write down personal things. But individual things that I'm praying for is easy for me to see on my sticky notes and things of that nature. Again, like, like Minister Folk said, sometimes people will come to your mind, okay? Mm -hmm. And so as they come to your mind, you'll put them down. Sometimes people will come to you and say, can you pray for me? Instead of just saying, yeah, I'll pray for you and say, Lord, help her. Because that's what we do sometimes. I pray, Lord, help her. I don't know, and leave it at that. Sometimes I will, I will hear them, write it down, and then take my notes. Put what it is that I'm interceding. Some people don't even know that I'm praying for them. As far as the church, everybody in the church name is on my prayer wall. Everybody. So when I look at your name, it's what the Lord puts in my spirit at that moment to intercede for you. If it's something in, in particular that I'm interceding for, that'll be written out. But everybody's name that I cover and shepherd is on that wall. Come on. Okay, so what if someone comes to your mind that you don't like? Do you do you pray for that person? I mean, don't lie. I'm sure it's what if it's somebody that I truly just don't like. I mean, was you at church Sunday when I preached at the four o'clock service? You know, I was there. Okay, so what scripture did I read? You ain't got to tell me the scripture uh, where it said in the verse, but what did we say? First Corinthians. No, no, no. I ain't, I ain't asking that. That's the love one. But they came to a point where we dealt with those individuals that you ain't really feeling that much. That you don't have to hang out with enemy. No, but it said pray for those who curse you. Okay. So that so could be somebody that, be somebody that you might like. So that could be that somebody. That you have issues with. Okay. And yes. Okay. And? <laughs> I, have a lot, I have a lot of questions. Okay. So oh, you say you have everybody on the church on your prayer, on your wall. Uh-huh. Their name. What if God gave you ten different things? For that particular person. If 10 things are underneath for that particular person's name, they'll probably have a separate sheet. Okay. Individuals that have more detailed stuff, there's another sheet. It's a whole bunch of papers, sticky, colorful, neon papers with writing on them. And the reality of it is when I go before the Lord, the reality, I will, there are times I will sit and I will pray for everything on that board. Which means your prayer time will be more than five minutes. Sometimes I may have a moment when I'm focusing on just one particular thing. Even though I have certain scriptures on there, oftentimes I may start with the scripture or certain scriptures will come in my spirit as I'm praying. So, so the bottom line is, you know, that's what. So let me tell you, uh, Lady Nicholas said, Hey, Lady E. She said, most intercessors don't pray for themselves. It's easier for us to intercede on behalf of others. That's why it's easy to pray for others. She said, I had to teach the intercessions I mentor how to how important it is for us to pray for ourselves. It's not selfish to pray for oneself. Prayer is going to God, preferably daily, asking him for his help and letting him know how much we need and rely on him. Intercession is when you pray for others. Most believers don't understand prayer is different from intercession or petition or thanksgiving. 
there are various forms of prayer. Exactly. Because even when we get further in this teaching, and I begin to tell you some things to deal with in your room, war room as far as prayer, you're going to see there's so many different components. There's so many different things to pray about. It ain't just other people. It's not just you. It's different components. And we need, sometimes we need guidance to know what to tap into. We just need guidance sometimes. And so, Reverend Glover from Georgia said, posture before God conveys an attitude of honor. Reverend Mitchell, I'm sorry, Reverend Mary Mitchell. Posture before God conveys an attitude of honor, gratitude, and faith, acknowledging that all things come from his hand. Amen. And so even with Lady, uh, Lady E, Apostle E, she's passionate about prayer. That's her heart's desire. Anybody know her? She's a praying woman. Come on. So prior to your 60 days, did you lay before the Lord daily? Did you do it every day? No, you just... No, and even when... No, no. It's not something that you do. You have to lay daily. I'm saying we need to get in the habit of sometimes laying out before him. Now, in here, yes, I'm laying daily. There are times when I will lay down. Sometimes I sit Indian style. It depends at that moment. You know what I'm saying? I will sit on my floor with my war room board open right in front of it, and then I just sit there Indian style and pray. Because if I'm laying down, I can't read what I'm praying. So then after I do that, then I may be led to lay uh, prostrate before the Lord, or I can lay prostrate before. It all depends. There's no set thing where this is the clockwork on how it's going to go. Because even when I've been coming here every day, every day is different. Even though I labor for him, what takes place is different. Come on, I saw somebody else saying it. Deacon James, who? I was just going to say, you pretty much said it. Um, they, everybody is going to be different. There's no textbook way to do this. The most important thing is to have a secret place. Um, I mean, it's not going to be the same way. Everybody's not going to have colorful stickies. You know, everybody's not going to have... Some people might write on the wall, literally. So, you know, mm -hmm. it may not be a closet. It might be just a room that nobody goes in. You know, right. so... Just for anybody listening, I mean, it, it's no one way. Right, right, you know? right. Because we're talking about, we talking about the movie. People may have seen the movie. It's not going to be just like that. That's I think right. the most important thing is what the scripture says, to have that secret place. Find a room, have that secret place. And however God move in that room is between you and him. Right. And the key thing is give it to Mitchell. I mean, also, folks, and also since I'm since that's just asking multiple questions. Um <laughs> just like let's, you know, when you go back to the whole uh, um laying down too. Uh-huh. Um, I also believe that, you know, sometimes God just honors your obedience, you know, and just by that, when he took your spirit to do that and you do it, sometimes, you know, things happen in the supernatural that you don't even ask for, that you don't even do, you know, it, it could be something that was destined to happen that would, was maybe, you know, not good, but because you was obedient to God, he stops some stuff from manifesting. You know, he, he may, he can be protecting you. You know, it's not always one way. You know, God can be doing stuff in the supernatural to protect you. Mm -hmm. You know, you may have been going down a road where, you know, something, some danger was, you know, ahead. And because you, you know, you lay before him, he just moves some stuff out of the way. You know, or open some doors or close some doors. Right. You know, right. whatever. Stuff that you don't even know. So that you don't even, you're not even aware of. That's in your future, in right. your pathway. So. But when you're a person that overthinks, you want to know, okay, God, well, I hear people talking about laying before you. And I know people even they prostrate before you on the threshing floor in the Bible. 
But I want to know, God, if I lay before you, are you going to speak to me clearer than you do when I'm sitting down? Because if you're not going to speak to me clearer when I'm sitting, laying down versus when I'm sitting up, uh, then I want to know, God, why do I even need to take the opportunity to lay before you? So once you give me that answer, then I might lay in your presence. But if I can't get that answer beforehand, then I'm not going to lay in your presence. That there go right there, them two right there. -uh. Twins. <laughs> no, I'm talking about these two, them twins, them twins right there. Come on. Come on, who's next? I'm next. Um, <laughs> you know, at least I think um, Lisa asked you, did you have overthinkers? Did you have a war room before? Right. Now, there, I don't know if this is a. Is, we just if my, where, I, where I pray has always been my war room. Okay. Well, the scripture what we just looked at it said, go into your secret place and shut the door. Now, I don't know where I heard this, and you probably heard me say it. it was, I heard something about going to your closet. So, I literally, I literally thought you were supposed to go in a closet. Wait, Somebody I, look at the King James Version because I don't know if King I, James said that. I looked at King James and I didn't see it, but I know I've heard it go in your closet. Yeah. I, or either I took secret place as a closet. So, I've always gone in the closet. And I remember telling you years ago that I, I went in a closet and you said to me, uh, you literally do not have to really go in a closet. <laughs> but I, I mean, when you unlearn, I thought you actually had, had to, to go, go in a closet. Because that was like a secret place. Now, like, yeah, wait, 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 so you uh, looked at it in the King James, right? Yeah, it didn't say And it that. don't say closet. Yes, it does. It, it does. does. Oh, maybe it King James. King James. I want the King what James. It, say? it says, um, oh, God, I just had it. Uh, That's probably it where says, I got it from. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. That's okay. where, I, that's where okay. I got it from. Because I started out when I grew up. I grew up. I mean, when I first got saved, <laughs> um, they had the... Um, they had the uh, King James Version. So I literally took it to mean that you actually went into the closet. And mm -hmm. that's why I went into the closet, been going in the closet for years, but it just so that I've changed the closet into the war room. Mm -hmm. So I've always gone in the closet. And since, like Deacon James, since we can ask more than one question. This is a good topic here. No. You know what? I'm going to have to add Angelina to my, she already on there. I was going to say, what? She already on there, but I'm going to have to add something else. Uh -oh. Because you you really need to ask yourself and ask God to help you understand why you got a difficult time praying for people that you don't like. That's a problem. That, because, that's, that's a major problem. Okay, because now, just say, People can't hear her online, so give her the microphone so she can respond back. We love interactive Bible studies. This is what we do here at Nothing But The Truth Ministries. I don't even think I have gotten off the second page of my uh, teaching, but it's all to the glory of God. Okay, so while I'm sitting here in Bible study, somebody has dropped into my mind. So I should put that person in my war room. I mean, uh, are you really asking that or did it drop in your spirit to do it? And you're fighting against what dropped in your spirit. It's somebody that I dislike. Okay, but are you fighting against what dropped in your spirit? Because we're talking about prayer and we're talking about interceding for people and that person dropped in your spirit. Now you're sitting in your chair and you're having a battle with what the drop in your spirit. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. You want to you, you wanna say, should I put them on the prayer wall? Do you really want me to answer that? Do I really need to answer that? Why? Because I want you to. Like, you'll tell me Why? You to. <laughs> but, you know, you know, praying for your enemies, I tell you, it, it makes you feel better. Maybe, maybe not your enemies, but, or people that don't like you, it makes you feel better. But, okay, so, I had... It worked for me. For me. I, I All right, so I have I have an issue. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying you know sometimes. Okay, so I I battle with this thing with uh, ADD. Let's just say that. Okay. So when I'm praying, now I, I I've been working on this and trying to stay focused, but when I'm praying, sometimes I lose focus. Okay. And I and I try to bounce back. Like, I'll be praying, and then my mind wanders off to something. I bounce, try to bounce back, and it becomes a struggle. Okay. Okay. Because you Because of, like, losing focus and wandering mind, whatever the case may be. The reality of it is you realize when it's drifting, you have to bring it back. But sometimes you can help yourself with setting your atmosphere. Angelita walked up in the church today, and she was like, what is that noise? And the thing is, I had the sound of water flowing through bamboo. 
it's very calming because when you are a person that has a lot on your mind or you think about a lot of things, sometimes you have to get yourself in a position. You have to set your atmosphere when you shut that door to calm your own mind. So a lot of times I will start with something. I love the sounds of water, certain things that I like. Sometimes I will have worship music. It all depends, you know, what, what, what I need at that moment. But sometimes, like say a day I've been hustling and bustling, I need the sounds of the soft water, the streams and things of that nature to help relax me so I can be focused because I know me. I have a mind that goes when I'm asleep. I don't know. I was telling somebody this, and I don't. Oh, I was telling Angelita. I said, my mind never stops. When I'm sleeping, I'm still thinking about things that I need to do, ministry assignments, life, just different stuff all the time when I'm sleeping. So if my mind is like that all the time, I've learned that, you know, the reality of it, I have to do something in my time of prayer to shut my mind down. And that's what helps me. So there's so many different things. You can go on YouTube. My bamboo um, 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 playlist, it runs for 12 hours, 10 hours. So you don't have to change the switch or nothing. It's just 10 hours of constant of that sound. It's so much that you can tap into to help set your atmosphere when you go into your place and shut the door. And as Deacon James said, one thing about it, everybody's situation would be different, but I think most of us could probably be honest and say we need to pray more. See, because that's what I'm trying to stimulate. Pass it back. We need to pray more. You got it already? Yes. This is for Angie. Um, you said it's like somebody you don't like, you don't want to pray for them or whatever. You find it hard to. But think about what if somebody didn't like you. And you know what I'm saying? That the tables were reversed. But yet and still they go into their secret place and intercede on your behalf. Well, I, I wouldn't know one way or the other. I, but I'm just saying, right. you know, they don't think of it like that. They're thinking about your soul or whatever the issue might be, something that the Lord revealed to them. No, we don't like everybody, but when the Lord drops something in your spirit that you need to pray for someone, so you got to get past how you feel and be obedient and just pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so, on that note, I'm not even going to get into the next part because we have covered enough. And we are past our time right now. And so uh, when we come back on next week, I'm going to really begin to explain what a war room is. When you hear even the definition of a war room, it's good. It's good. It's opening up, us up to a whole other realm. And so um, I pray that uh, you all will be prepared to take your prayer life to another level. I pray that you will make time for the Lord daily. Make intimate time. Not fly by night. Not on the way to work. Not all this. Sometimes slow yourself down. Have your Bible. Have your journal. Have different things with you so that when God begins to speak to you or if he say, I want you to read Psalm 50 right now. And he may bring that to your scripture because he may be trying to show you that this is a scripture that you need to read because it's about David when he needed to repent, whatever the case may be. When you, If he put a scripture in your spirit and you read it, even if it's something that you read before, I promise you he's going to speak to you through that scripture. See, sometimes we always waiting for him to speak to us through our inner man. But sometimes he will speak directly to you through the word. So you need to be in a position where you have your word, where you have your pen, where you have your journal, where you can commune right here and receive. And so we thank you all for taking this opportunity to tune in to our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, uh, go to our website, www.mbttministries.com to find out more about our service locations, times, and Things of that nature. We would love you to come and fellowship with us. I pray that this teaching has been a blessing so far. We just getting started and we ain't even touched the tip of the iceberg yet. Amen. And so be blessed. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Amen. Amen. For those of us in the house of the Lord, it is time to give it to the house.